We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, everybody, welcome to the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Info Session. This is hosted by the Scandalaire Center, and we are the Office of Interdisciplinary Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Washington University in St. Louis. And I am Erin Michener, the Office Coordinator, and I'll be handling um, the first portion of the presentation and then passing it off to my colleague, Jessica Weldon. So to begin, our mission is that we aim to inspire and develop creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship at WashU. And our tagline is where creative minds connect. So we, um, like I mentioned, are an interdisciplinary center. So that means that our initiatives and programs and resources serve all students, faculty, staff, and alumni at the university. During normal operating times, we do have two locations. Um, we have a great space on the Danforth campus in the Mallinckrodt Center. So we're on the lower level, uh, right directly below Subway. And it's a great co-working space where we have furniture um, that's movable. We have dry erase boards that you can right on the walls and it's just really a collaborative space that we look forward to getting back to soon. But at this time we are all working remotely, but we're still open and available to serving everybody. And then our second location is located on the medical campus. Um, if anybody is familiar, it is Caddy Corner to the Feral Learning Teaching Center. Um, and again, it's a great space where part of our team can meet with faculty members and other staff um, over there. And then a little bit about who we are. So we um, are, our leadership is by Tu Lusky, who's our managing director. Um, he's also the assistant vice Pro provost for innovation and entrepreneurship at the university. Um, followed by that is Mike Steeper, who is our associate director. So we kind of like to think of him as our chief operating officer. Uh, we also have Jessica Weldon, who I mentioned, who is our assistant director of programs. So she oversees all of our uh, student-run programs and resources. And then Cyril is our assistant director of venture development. So he is a great resource, to, resource for anybody who has an idea or is interested in starting a business or getting um, involved with the business and he'll take a lot of those onboarding meetings as well as running our student competition. Tom Krenning is our assistant director of LEAP and research innovation. So he runs our LEAP competition um, and works closely with faculty at the Danforth and medical school. Nancy Nye is our communications and events manager um, who works closely with Sydney Everett, our marketing communication specialist. Um, and they're both a great team that promote all of our events, um, oversee the branding of the center, and work with other constituents. Like I said, I'm the office coordinator. Um, I help pretty much with anything in the office that comes up, primarily events um, and other human resource type things. And then lastly, um, but not least, is Everett Hall. He is our translation fellow and he works closely with Tom Krenning um, on the LEAP and research innovation side. And then the um, best way for students to get involved if, this, if the Panelair Center is new to you all um, is start off by subscribing to our Panelair Center newsletter. So that is sent out every Monday. Um, we only do it once a week, but it's a great resource that's really all encompassing and we'll include our upcoming events um, as well as opportunities. And we include things not just related to the Fina Lair Center, but also things that are happening at Washington University and in the St. Louis community, as well as the region. Another thing is that you can join student groups and fellowships. So on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see some of the available student groups on campus um, and their logos. So really anything from, you know, uh, biotech to design um, venture capital. So there's really something for everyone. And then you can also follow us on social media. So we have an Instagram page, a Facebook page, 
a YouTube channel, as well as a LinkedIn. And then last but not least, attend our event. So again, I did mention that we're remote right now, but we still have a jam-packed schedule um, and there really is something for everyone. And so we hope that uh, something piques your interest and you'll get involved and continue on through your time at WashU. As far as parents who are parents and family members who are um, joining us today, so pretty similar, subscribe to our newsletter. You can do that through our website um, and we can get you also assigned today for those who are not currently subscribed, um, social media, attending our events, volunteer to judge our, to judge our competitions. Um, so we'll have those opportunities available throughout the year that we can speak more about. And then also um, volunteer to mentor or advise student entrepreneurs because there are students, um, since we do serve everyone of all academic schools and backgrounds, uh, we're always looking for mentors and advisors to really kind of help our students um, and point them in the next direction with the, in the right direction with the next step. And so now I will pass it off to Jessica Weldon, who will talk more specifically about the programs and events. Thanks, Erin. There are a lot of ways for students and parents to engage with the Scandalaire Center. I'm going to cover some of the ways that students can connect, innovate, launch, and learn through the Scandalaire Center. First is our weekly virtual connection, connecting sessions. This is a great way to get to know people across campus, including students, faculty, and staff. I know a lot of us are really missing our in-person interactions right now, and this is a way, of, or this is our way of finding new ways to network in our virtual environment. Uh, students, family, parents can register through our events page on our website to get the updated link each week. But this happens every single Monday at 4 p.m. via the MeetAway platform, which is a great sort of uh, chat video chat platform so they're they're a lot of fun i really recommend um it as a way to get connected to what's going on not just through the scandalary center but also on campus in terms of create um, we have launched a greeting card design contest for the scandalary center we are looking for creative students to submit their designs for our thanksgiving card and our thank you cards this opportunity is open to all wash students uh, you don't have to be a part of any one uh, school or opportunity. And uh, winners uh, of this contest will receive a $100 Amazon gift card. And if you are interested in this and want to submit your designs, please enter by November 2nd. For Innovate, uh, Idea Bounce is our signature platform for people to share ideas, get feedback, and make connections. I know some people may be nervous about sharing ideas they have for new venture concepts, but feedback and research is a very important part of the entrepreneurial process. And we encourage students to share their ideas, just not anything that would be considered their secret sauce. We have a very collaborative environment, and people find Idea Bounce a valuable platform and event as they develop their ideas. So this is both an uh, online platform and you can go to ideabounce.com and post your idea, start getting feedback there. Um, but we also host occasional, right now they're virtual, some better times we're in person and we have you know, networking and food. Um, but we have Idea Bounce events where people can pitch their ideas and start getting feedback and making those connections. Um, we don't have one on the calendar right now, but we should have another on the calendar before the end of this semester. So we hope that you can join us whether you have an idea or just want to hear what students and faculty and staff and even community members are up to. These events um, and the platform is open to everyone. Uh, so it's a great way to hear new ideas. Uh, we also offer several different competition opportunities to help students launch what they're working on. Uh, one of those competitions is our Global Impact Award, and this is for established ideas that are scalable and sustainable and that have a proof of concept um, and that also has a broad social impact. This entrepreneurship competition is open to Washington University undergraduate and graduate students, postdocs, residents, and recent alumni up to 10 years. 
so it's a really broad population and a really great opportunity to get mentorship and advising uh, and you know really have an impact with your idea. Applications open on Monday. So if you've got an established idea that you want to work on, uh, keep your eye out for that application link that will be released on Monday. Next is our Skindler Center Venture Competition. Uh, this is for earlier stage ideas that are seeking, um, you know, market research and customer discovery, um, as well as prototyping. So for anybody who's in that phase of concept development, the Skindler Center Venture Competition is an opportunity to win up to $22,500 in awards, receive expert mentorship for your new venture, uh, and focus on readying ideas for commercialization, launching, and pitching. So this is sort of the, the starter entrepreneurship competition. Um, if you go through this process, then you're really ready to take on, you know, the Global Impact Awards or any other regional or national competition um, or other, you know, seek investment opportunities or um, accelerator and incubator opportunities. Um, this competition is open to all of our WashU students and alumni within one year of graduation. Uh, we run SBC cycles two times a year, once each, each semester. So this competition is underway for this semester already. Uh, we'll have the awards announcements at the end of the semester in December, and applications for the spring cycle will open up in the spring. So stay tuned for that. It's a really great way to test ideas out in a safe environment and find out if they are viable and feasible and are something they can take hold of or something that needs a little bit more work, which is absolutely fine. Another unique opportunity that students have to launch a business or to buy into an existing small business is our Student Entrepreneurial Program, or STEP. Uh, stu undergraduate students can own a business on campus that serves the Washington University community. Students can participate by either starting a new venture um, or buying into an existing business. We have eight businesses uh, in the program right now. Um, we have several that have shares that are up for sale, um, and they, the owners are hoping to see those businesses continue on. Um, or we're always looking for new ideas that fit within the framework of STEP. Not all ideas are going to fit into the framework of STEP because we are trying to operate for-profit businesses on a nonprofit campus. So there are some restrictions on what's allowed through STEP. Um, but that's why we have so many other processes and opportunities for anything that doesn't fit into STEP we still have plenty of ways to help students launch something. So for any undergraduate students who might be interested in buying into an existing business, we have a training video on buying a business um, that is available upon request, and you must review that video and um, do some follow-up steps in order to be eligible to talk with existing businesses and consider their um, sales processes. Additionally, we have a step loan fund for undergraduate students with demonstrated financial need, uh, and you can apply for a loan of up to $10,000 to start a new business or to purchase an existing business. So this just sort of helps offset the costs. We realize that STEP is unique and that this is you know, very real money being used to buy very real businesses. Uh, so we're trying to help defray some of those costs for the students who need it. Our final launch opportunity for the most part is our LEAP Fund. Uh, it is up to $50,000 an award, and it is an asset development program and gap fund designed to provide intellectual and financial capital to translational research projects as they partner with existing companies or spin out into companies with funding. So all that's to say, we really, this is our faculty and researcher and postdoc uh, commercialization opportunity. So if anybody is working on research, that can be commercialized regardless of discipline. It's not just about the medical research or the engineering research. Um, this applies to, to many different areas. Then the LEAP process is a really great opportunity to receive additional funding to continue your research and get assistance with commercializing and standing up a, a startup um, to launch your business. Um, we are seeking judges for the fall 2020 cycle, which is underway now. So if you have experience um, in any sort of technology commercialization or startups or um, venture capital, and you're interested in working with us on LEAP, 
please reach out to Tom Krenning or Everett Hall, and they can talk to you more about how to get involved. For anybody who's interested in participating in LEAP, the next cycle will open up in January 2021. And uh, regardless of funding, the uh, careful individual assessments provide significant value to projects. So everything we've heard from LEAP participants is whether or not they get funding, they have found the process to be incredibly valuable. Okay, so we also do a lot around educa entrepreneurial education. Um, so we really focus on connecting students to the courses that are available at WashU. So classes in entrepreneurship are available to all undergraduate schools. Um, the hatchery is kind of the capstone course that's offered through the business school. The students from all levels and disciplines can take that class. It is an opportunity for students to focus on launching a venture idea that they may have. Um, and it does cater to undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and they, students who go through this process receive a lot of mentorship and a lot of community connections. And you can see some of the stats over the last 12 years, Hatchery teams have raised more than $87 million, created more than 460 full-time uh, equivalent positions, and filed for at least 17 patents. So it's a very impactful class if you have an idea and you really want to spend an entire semester focused on launching that idea. Also, fun fact, uh, the hatchery started in 1997, making it one of the oldest entrepreneurship courses in the United States. Another experiential learning opportunity for our undergraduate students is our St. Louis Entrepreneurial Fellowship. And this is a cohort of students who are interested in innovation and entrepreneurship at WashU and in St. Louis. This is a calendar year long opportunity. So the expectation is students will be involved for that entire calendar year. Um, we're recruiting for the second cohort now. I know we don't necessarily know what the spring or the summer or the fall next year is going to look like, but regardless of modality, whether we have to do all online, uh, or if we get to do a mix of in-person and online, or if we're really lucky and we get to all be back together on campus, um, we are going to run this fellowship um, and we will find creative and unique ways to connect students to what's going on at WashU and in St. Louis around innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, so over the spring semester, we have a weekly seminar that explores innovation and entrepreneurship, and we do a lot to connect students to what's happening in St. Louis and help them network in an effort to get them to land a summer internship opportunity, which is then the summer portion, which is a guaranteed paid summer internship at a St. Louis startup. Uh, and again, if we are in person, uh, there will be the option to take advantage of um, paid on-campus housing. If we have to be remote, uh, we'll do this. Students can be anywhere uh, and they can work for their venture remotely. We did it remote over the summer and it went very well. The fall semester consists of a capstone project where students can either work on developing their own new venture concept or work on developing programs and resources to fill a gap in programs and services in the St. Louis or WashU entrepreneurial community. Uh, this is open to all of our undergrad students. We want to see representation from all four undergraduate schools. Uh, applications are open now and will close November 9th. As Aaron mentioned earlier, we may be doing everything remotely, but we have a full slate of events and programs. Um, so we also have our Scandalaris startup webinars. And these are events that we're running uh, online and opportunities for people to hear from experienced entrepreneurs and experts in different areas of industry. Um, so, so far over this summer and fall, we've heard from uh, Jim McKelvey of Square, Mike Bynum from Stadia Ventures, we had a webinar on Inventing Made Easy with one of our experts, Sherry Renee, and we had one on um, networking in this virtual environment. So everything is meant to be very um, impactful and provide a lot of uh, concrete takeaways, and we include interactive discussions. We make great use of Zoom breakout rooms. Our upcoming uh, opportunities are an event with Kraft Heinz focused on entrepreneurship, which is focusing on innovation within a larger established company on October 28th. We have a pitch and anti-bias workshop on November 11th and helping entrepreneurs rise panel on November 18th. So these opportunities are open to everyone. So regardless of your affiliation or lack thereof, um, these events are open to you. 
And finally, um, we offer a honors for students who you know really do the hard work of taking the classes, being involved in our programs, maybe even launching something during their time here. And this is just sort of a way for us to celebrate those achievements. Um, so students who finish a, a, a combination of those classes and those experience, experiences can apply for our honors in innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, students in any degree program can apply and they receive an invite to our, normally our um, spring gala, our Scandia Awards, uh, as well as receive graduation courts. Um, but as we move forward, we'll find other ways to celebrate students who earn our honors. Innovation and entrepreneurship at WashU is an important part of WashU's academics and experiences. We are ranked um, number six for undergrads in entrepreneurship through Princeton Review and number 16 for graduate students in entrepreneurship, also through Princeton Review. Poets and Quants uh, last year ranked us number one for the full-time program in the MBA uh, program. Our opportunities for the most part are open to all levels and disciplines. Um, like I said, there's classes in every single school for entrepreneurship and innovation. And over the last 10 years, Undergrads have started more than 230 companies and raised nearly $5 billion, while graduate alumni have started over 140 companies and raised $185 million. I think those are really impactful numbers and really demonstrate what can be accomplished by working with the Scandalera Center and taking venture concepts through our programs and resources. And finally, St. Louis is actually a hotspot for innovation and entrepreneurship. We are home in this region to at least 19 incubators, 11 accelerators, easily more than 130 startups. I think that's a, an underestimate actually. Um, 16 co-working spaces and they're adding more all the time. Six different maker spaces and at least 22 different entrepreneurial support organizations. We are an incredibly supportive community here in St. Louis. Uh, so you really can't go wrong by trying to test something out and launch it here in St. Louis. We've been ranked the second fastest growing startup scene, and a third of our new businesses are in the healthcare sector. At WashU, students tend to start more than 20 ventures each year. So that just shows the drive and determination of our students, and again, what can be accomplished. So as Sydney mentioned in the chat as we were getting this started, um, if you've got questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and the staff and I will um, answer any questions to the best of our ability. And if anybody wants to take yourself off mute, you're welcome to do that as well and, and ask questions so you can. Yes, we are going to, we recorded this and we're gonna send the link to the First Year Center and they will upload everything in a central place for people to access later next week. Okay, uh, I do see two more. Um, I can answer both of them if that's okay from my staff. Um, some recent student founded businesses. Um, the ones that I'm thinking of, we have Pareto, which is a me medical device. We see several medical device startups every year, especially because of our association with Sling Health, which is a student organization that allows um, students to create solutions to healthcare problems and spin up startups based on those solutions. Um, there is a uh, tamale company um, that started. I know uh, our staff had the opportunity to try out those tamales. I heard they were great. I was disappointed I didn't get one. Um, and then there is a student who is starting a skincare line. Um, in the realm of step, we actually started two new step businesses this year. We have a gift store called Gallery 314. So someday when you're back 
on campus, you can check them out on the South 40, or you can check them out at um, hewittsgallery314.com. Um, they are doing sales online and will ship as well. Uh, and then we also started a food delivery business and they will deliver students meals to their dorm rooms to kind of help with um, some of the, you know, needs for being physically distant right now. Um, I'm going to take the fellowship one really quickly. Um, right now, the expectation, like, I'm going to go with best case scenario and pretend we're all going to be in person and say that the expectation is that you are in St. Louis for that calendar year so that you are in the weekly seminar, you're doing your internship with um, the St. Louis Space Startup, and then are working with the cohort on the capstone projects. Um, in the event of a remote environment, then the expectation changes a bit and you can be wherever in the world you wanna be, but the expectation is that you would still be interacting with the cohort on a weekly basis, that you do the internship with a St. Louis based startup um, and then do the, the capstone project regardless of where you are. Um, all right, actually, I'm gonna throw this one to the staff. What's the single best way to start engaging in entrepreneurship at WashU? Can I take that one, Jessica? Yes, absolutely, Mike. All right, my name is Mike Sieper. I'm the associate director here at the Scandalera Center. So we would love to get everybody involved in entrepreneurship. And so I'm a believer that the best way to get involved is by doing and participating. So that can start as simply as attending events and learning more about the source of revenue uh, that you can create by building a business, the resources that are available through our center, or just testing out your concept through a competition. So getting involved with the competition comes with great mentorship and opportunities to develop an executive summary, a value proposition. These are all great ways to be able to win some prize funding, to be able to launch your venture. Uh, but also all the assistance that you can gain along the way through venture development with Cyril, through uh, opportunities to meet with our experts on call and our in-residence professionals. We have a multitude of different resources and the best way to get involved is to just contact us and let us know what you're trying to create and let us help you. Mike, do you wanna take this other one about when is the best time for a student to start to engage in your program? Do you suggest a freshman to engage in entrepreneurship? Yes, that's great. So freshmen get involved. The sooner you get involved, the more resources you can leverage during your time here. So we reach out to alumni that even after they're gone, but think of all the assistance that you can gain over the next four years by just engaging with the Scandalera Center, starting with a concept, pivoting to different ideas you may have, doing customer discovery, speaking to the people that could be potentially using this, learning along the way. That's so important that your first idea might not be what excites you four years from now, but you will learn so much along the way. Uh, you'll avoid obstacles and you'll be able to feel confident in what you're launching. You'll also be able to have opportunities uh, to pitch different ideas at Idea Bounce events, to meet people and network and build a team. So it's very important that as you're going out and building a business that you know you don't have to do it alone and we're one great resource to be able to help you but there's going to be other people that are just as interested in uh, entrepreneurship and building a venture with a lot of different skill sets that can assist you along the way yes definitely the sooner you start the better any other questions that we can answer Yes, uh, alumni, if you've got something you want to offer the students, um, we can definitely talk with you about hosting a virtual session. Um, your best bet is to reach out to Mike um, and he can talk with you about how to um, do that. Uh, let's see. Tom or Cyril or Mike, somebody want to tackle the leak question? So I'll just uh, cast a wide net for judges, for uh, any alumni that want to get involved with us. 
there's always great opportunities to be able to do that. So all you need to do is reach out to us, let us know what your area expertise is, and we'll find a way to get you involved. If that's pop-up support, judging, reviewing executive summaries for SVC, GIA, looking at some slide decks, doing some pitch practice, we have students that are eager to learn from your experience. So please reach out and be part of our community. These have been fantastic questions. Uh, any additional thoughts or questions? Perfect, thank you, Nancy. Nancy put the link to our homepage and you can sign up for our newsletter there as well as there are a couple of different connection forms that you can fill out and get more information about some of the things that we've been talking about. Uh, on the hatchery, yes, it is course credit classwork. Most of the Scandalar Center programs and uh, events are entirely co-curricular. We don't do anything for credit, um, but like I said, we do maintain good relationships with the professors who are offering uh, classes for course credit. So we encourage students to do a mix of both. The, the uh, theoretical and book learning is really important, and we kind of offer the experiential hands-on learning piece. And then Jessica, also to go back to um, contact information, all of the staff are listed on our website as well, um, under about, and then you can go to team, but if you have any questions, we do have a general email address that we monitor, and that's sc at wustl.edu. And I will put that in the chat as well. For the hatchery, um, students can learn more about it, or if there are parents who want to get involved as mentors or judges, you can reach out to the professor who is Doug Vilhard. And I'm going to put his name and email into the chat. Oops. Well, let's do that to everybody. That would help. Okay. Doug Vilhard, uh, dvilhard at wustel.edu. He is the hatchery professor, and he would love to talk to anybody about the hatchery. Uh, the hatchery does typically require like an intro class. Um, there is an intro to entrepreneurship class through the business school. Uh, there's also a course in the engineering school called entrepreneurial engineering that qualifies as a prereq as well. So additional questions about hatchery prereqs can be funneled to Doug and he can tell you if there are other classes that count. Uh, I know Everett's on here, so I'm going to turn it over to Everett to talk more about the LEAP judge requirements. Hey, sure. So we have, um, although Tom may be a better one to answer this, although I, I don't know if he's here right now. Um, LEAP judges have a pretty wide range of qualifications. You know, we have uh, people from, you know, up in sea level positions in industry all over the country, but then we also have, you know, local entrepreneurship um, people, uh, people from Biogenerator and other organizations like Cultivation Capital. Um, but I believe we've also had uh, other faculty members uh, be judges as well. Um, but, you know, we're always open as long as there's, uh, you know, some expertise that can uh, be leveraged. We're open to a conversation for sure and see uh, what would be a good fit, whether it's for leap judging or any of our other uh, mentorship, 
mentorship opportunities. Perfect. Thank you, Everett. Again, these have been great questions. Any other questions, please put them in the chat. Oh yeah, also I will put, um, I'm sure it'll be distributed anyway, but I will put my, my email and Tom Kring's email in the chat as well. Uh, so people can contact us about any questions regarding LEAP. Perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, since I'm not seeing any additional questions come into the chat right now, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. We thank you so much for taking the time to come uh, learn about the Scandalaris Center. We hope that you have a great rest of the weekend and enjoy the different virtual interactions for Parent and Family Weekend at WashU. Oh, one more question. Um, Chris Mardini says, as a freshman, is there anything I can do to strengthen my application to the SC Fellowship? Um, Chris, just um, there will be a few short answer questions and be sure to explain in detail why you're excited about the fellowship, any background or experience that you have. And even if you don't have any experience, tell us why you're excited about this particular opportunity. Um, that's the, the best thing that you can do is uh, showcase why you're excited about this and what this fellowship opportunity would mean to you. All right, last chance, final questions. Final call. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Our staff is gonna stay on the Zoom call for a few minutes, just in case there are some individual questions. But again, thanks so much for taking the time. Have a great rest of the weekend and take care. Thanks. Looks like if you have a question. Fellowship, uh, and it is a calendar year long opportunity for undergraduate students to engage in innovation and entrepreneurship through the Scandalaris Center. So the spring is a weekly seminar with Scandalaris Center staff and community members to get connected to the St. Louis entrepreneurial community uh, and doing some networking to land a summer internship. Uh, the summer portion is actually doing the summer internship portion with a local startup. Uh, and then the fall is a capstone experience, either developing uh, their own venture concepts or creating a new program or resource to address any perceived gaps in the St. Louis or WashU entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, it's open to undergrads from all of our schools and applications are open now and uh, deadline November 9th. Yes, if, uh, if, the fellow, if accepted to the fellowship program, the internship uh, is in fact guaranteed. We will, we will do everything in our power to find the student an internship. We had uh, 11 fellows this summer and not one of them went out, went without an internship, so. Jessica, we do have an additional question about the fellowship and how many are typically accepted to the cohort. We don't have a cap right now. Um, I don't think we'll take more than 20, um, but it just depends on how many people apply um, and what we feel like are the, the best applicants.
All right, one more question. Can we say more about STEP? What does it mean to own part of a business? Do you work in it? Do graduating students sell their portion? Those are very good questions. Um, so the eight businesses that we have on campus are entirely student owned and operated, which means our undergrad students have a financial stake in the business. Um, we don't have any financial stake in it. Uh, we provide sort of the programmatic guardrails for the program that the owners are expected to operate within. But beyond that, we do not tell them really how to operate their business. Um, as students graduate, most of them do choose to sell their shares so that the businesses can continue on. Um, I know there are a couple of businesses entirely up for sale right now by students who either graduated in the spring and had to deal with the campus shutdown and didn't get the sales done in the normal timeline, as well as students who will be graduating this year. Um, so a lot of times they will choose to sell to either a whole ownership team, um, whether that's staggered ownership, uh, a mix of students, you know, usually first and second years, um, or to a group that's, you know, all first years or all second years. Um, and, and they go through, you know, the entire negotiation process. Um, and then, yes, the students do work in those businesses. They have to figure out balancing running an on-campus business with their schoolwork and their other extracurriculars. But I will say I have had step owners who are pre-med students who go on to med school, uh, student athletes. Um, so it's something that's very, very doable. Um, it's just up to the students to figure out, you know, priorities and, and balancing everything. Um, so I, I think that hopefully answers all of your questions about STEP, but if you have more questions about STEP, let me know. All right, so thank you again to everyone for joining us today. Um, that is all that we have for you. So we're going to head and wrap up. But again, um, please check out our website. Please join our newsletter. If you have any other questions, reach out to uh, individual staff or again at our general email account of sc at wusel.edu. Um, enjoy the rest of parent and family weekend. We look forward to hopefully welcoming everybody on campus next year. Um, and in the meantime, we look forward to engaging you in future events. So thank you and have a great day.